Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from Clapham in southwest London to London Bridge in central London just south of the river. This ride takes about 20 to 25 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. If you find this video useful then make sure you subscribe to the channel because I post new ones like it every week. Alright, let's get going. So we're starting smack bang in the middle of Clapham Common and you can't cycle on all the paths in this place but you can cycle on this one that goes past the Temperance Fountain and uh, this is shared with pedestrians so you know make sure you're courteous and go slowly and uh, it leads to this very nice cycle crossing here that's a cycle parallel zebra crossing and um, that actually works exactly the same way as a zebra so cars should stop for you as you go past however they may or may not so I'd be really careful when you use that because a lot of drivers don't seem to be aware of how that works um, now we're going down Bromwell's Road here and uh, this is a relatively quiet street and what we're doing at the moment is the, for the first push portion of this journey we're following a Transport for London signposted route called Quiet Way 5 so we're following the Q5 symbols that are written on the road and there are also sort of signs on lampposts that say Quiet Way 5 now uh, this route is mostly pretty good it mostly goes through some quite quiet back streets and just make sure you follow the arrows the whole journey isn't all on Quiet Way 5, just the beginning of it. What we're doing at the moment is we're actually shadowing the A3 through quiet back streets. So the A3 has Cycle Super Highway 7 or CS7 on it, which is a much more well-known cycle route. And parts of that have been upgraded, but actually I think a lot of it's not quite up to scratch yet. So uh, this is a much better alternative, I think, which sort of takes you through streets which mostly don't have any through traffic on them. This bit at the beginning we're on now and that we've just done actually did have a little bit. It's um, There are still a few cars, but that's about to change. So we turn right here onto Larkall Rise and we go over this bridge and you can see there's actually a no entry sign for cars here and there's another one in, in the opposite direction. Um, so Lambeth Council has actually made that uh, what we call a permeable filter. So uh, motor traffic can't actually go through it but cycles can and what that's done is it's really quietened down Larkall Rise and Larkall Lane. This is a street that used to be actually quite a busy, uh, a busy car route but you can see it's pretty quiet and I'm sure the people who live in the estates on the road also appreciate that too. And uh, despite the fact there isn't any protection on this quite big road, it's actually quite a nice place to cycle on. There are a few through routes that cars can take on here but the vast majority of them are actually closed off for cars so it's really a bit of a free run for us and it makes a really useful transport corridor coming in from Clapham going into sort of central London towards Vauxhall which is what we're doing now. Now we're still on Quiet Way 5 and you can see there's another filter coming up here this is no entry for cars but there's a little cut through for cycles generally when you're planning your own cycle routes you should remember that filters are your friend so basically if there's anywhere that's no entry for cars but bikes can go through it you're likely to run into a lot less traffic on those streets and i think those are those sort of streets are just as important as finding a good protected cycle lane in stringing together a route and they're also a lot sort of cheaper and easier for councils to install you know it doesn't doesn't take months of construction work to build curbs and things like that all you need to do is put a sign up put some planters up or maybe install a couple of bollards this area hasn't had the full low traffic neighborhood treatment there's still a bit of through traffic there so you are we are running into a few cars but generally i think it's pretty tolerable it's also quite a nice part of town to cycle through the the houses are really pretty and uh, with the roads clear you can really sort of just go slowly and relax and enjoy it um, by the way this is a good time to mention that if you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it then uh, do make sure you subscribe to the channel because I post new ones like it every week and uh, you can also find the uh, the map of this route in the description below the video there's a link to it and you can download the GPS GPX files now uh, this portion of the route we're crossing South Lambeth Road on these traffic lights and we're actually going into a full low traffic neighborhood now this is the oval triangle low traffic neighborhood and what this means is that basically all the residential streets around here there's no through route for cars on them but cycles can pass through it and that means that these streets are really quiet so you can see there's people just walking in the road there because they feel comfortable being out and they're not having to constantly look over their shoulder to maybe the same extent or you know feel hemmed in on the side of the street when it's dominated by cars as a result, I think this stretch approaching Oval, uh, approaching Vauxhall, is probably one of the nicest bits of the route. It's uh, it's really quiet and uh, it's just quite a nice area to cycle through. 
something else I'd also like to point out is um, this is another LTN that benefits sort of large areas of council estate and council housing. It really is a myth to say that um, that only sort of wealthier areas or sort of leafy terraces benefit. Um, I'd say this is a pretty mixed area. There's lots of different types of housing here. And that's frankly true of pretty much all the low traffic neighbourhoods that I've been to. In fact, one thing that I really liked that Lambeth did when they uh, when they consult on these this policy is they always mark the um, the major estates on the map of the LTN, which obviously corrects people's misimpression, but it also um, is good that it shows that the council is actually thinking about these things when they plan it. Here's another estate we're going through just now, the Ashmall Estate. Now uh, we're leaving the LTN and we're actually coming out onto a uh, really wide segregated cycle track here going past Oval. That's the Oval Cricket Ground on the right. Make sure you pay attention to these traffic lights coming up to let the pedestrians across. And then uh, you can see that dead ahead of us is the MI6 building. So that means that we're heading straight towards Vauxhall. There's quite a neat design here. You can see there are these traffic lights here, but there isn't actually one on the cycle track. We're actually able to bypass that, uh, that section. Um, but do pay attention to the zebra crossing there, which is to let people access the bus stop, uh, which is floating on an island in between the cycle track and the main road. And uh, so when I've done this sec this little junction before in videos, I've gone a different way, but uh, somebody else pointed out that you could actually go around the side of the Vauxhall Tavern. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the green light here, go over the crossing here, be very careful when you go over here because there'll be uh, cyclists coming across it. But then we go down Godding Street to the left of to the west of uh, Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens and then join the Pleasure Gardens at their earliest opportunity on the uh, on the path so you turn right and uh, basically join the track and you are allowed to cycle in this park but this, the paths are shared use so do make sure you uh, you sort of go slowly and you watch out for pedestrians and just generally be courteous when you're around people on foot um, as you know it can be quite you know disconcerting if somebody whizzes past you on a bike and uh, this is a nice little spot, I think, uh, Vauxhall Walk. Uh, it's sort of mostly offices and flats and uh, sort of a few, a few businesses around. Um, but it's generally pretty quiet. And uh, yeah, it's nice. You can see those kids cycling around um, by themselves. Um, this is uh, somewhere else that's been sort of, uh, has benefited from traffic calming. And you can see there's plenty of the sort of high rise estates, medium rise estates, all sorts of stuff around. So again, massive myth to say that traffic calming is just for wealthier areas. I just don't think that's the case at all. We're still following Quiet Way 5 here, by the way. You can see the Q5 symbols on the road, so that's the way to remember which way to go. That railway viaduct appearing on the uh, on the left of the screen is actually the southwest main line, so that's the uh, the main line running into Waterloo, and it goes all the way to Portsmouth and serves places like um, Guildford or Woking and that kind of thing. It's the uh, it's Southwestern Railway, it's the trains that run on it. It's easy to miss this next turning, by the way, although I think TfL might have tweaked the sign a bit to make it better. But yeah, you want to go through that little bollard and into Ingram Close, which is the uh, the way the quiet way goes. It's not left, it's not right, it's actually straight on. And by the way, if you're doing this during business hours, make sure you watch out for vans and other sort of light light industrial traffic coming out from these railway arches because they can be a source of traffic. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this junction. I'm showing you the sort of uh, the proper way which is you can go to these lights and make sure you press this button here and uh, then it, that light will eventually turn green and you can go across. Alternatively you can just treat that junction as if you were a car you can just come out wait for a gap in the traffic and go across and usually it's quite enough. Um, we're on Hercules Road now and uh, this is uh, really nicely surfaced and also has a great little bollard at the end. That's keeping the street really quiet and preventing any through traffic from coming through. If you want to visit the Imperial War Museum, by the way, turn right at that turquoise pub um, down Cossett Street. It's a good day out, I actually really recommend it. Now that's Lambeth North Tube Station, dead ahead. And uh, coming up there's an interesting configuration with the lights. So this first set of lights is green, but then there's immediately a second set of lights here and you've got to wait for those to turn green as well. That configuration is to allow you to safely merge with traffic. And uh, now we're coming onto Bayliss Road. While this is still technically a quiet way, um, it's still technically quiet way 5. It's obviously not really uh, a quiet way style route. This is a, uh, a fully segregated track and it's a really nice uh, really nice piece of work actually I'd say. it's um, You've got really good tracks in both directions and it really fills a gap in the route. On the left coming up here, that's the ramp to Waterloo Station. You can just see the train chair there poking over. And when we get to the end here, there's a similar traffic light configuration as I talked about with a, a sort of a, a first green light and then you have to wait for the second green light. 
This leads us on to the cut, which has the old Vic Theatre on the right there, and there's the young Vic as well coming up on the left. This used to be a really busy road, but it actually now makes a really nice sort of stretch of shops and cafes because there's uh, there's been a filter put in the middle of it, which we're just about to pass through, which really quietens the whole thing down and removes all the through traffic. Now, today I would actually do something a little bit different to what I do in this video. Um, I would actually go, at the end of this street, at the end of the cut, I would actually go dead ahead straight on into Union Street because there's actually been some changes since I shot the footage for this video and that, that street has been quietened down with a new filter. Um, but for now what I do is I go down Blackfriars Road a little bit, down this really nice cycle track and I turn right into Nicholson Street um, and that's actually uh, joining the start of another quietway route which is called uh, Quietway 14 or Cycleway 14 and that's here. Um, you'll see that we'll actually immediately start going right here and uh, I mean this is a perfectly nice route it's, it's it's really well protected just going straight down Union Street is a little bit shorter and we're actually going back on ourselves here though and we'll eventually come and meet Union Street so this little detour isn't actually necessary anymore because they've made Union Street a lot quieter with a kind of trial closure in one direction so it's more or less filtered and uh, it's supposed to be a lot nicer to cycle on now. I think I'll use that in a, in another video in the future and show you how it works. But you can see we've actually come back and we've rejoined Union Street. So you don't need to do that detour at all. Just go straight at the end of the cut and you'll find yourself here. If none of that makes sense, it'll make a lot of sense if you just look at the map. Um, and then it should be very clear. Now, if you know London at all, you'll know that the Shard is at London Bridge. And that is the Shard dead ahead of us on the skyline. So. We are getting there uh, pretty quickly and I think this is a really nicely done quiet way route. Um, there's a lot of filters on it. So uh, there's this one we're going through here and you wait for the traffic lights and just so you get your bearings, we're crossing Southwark Bridge Road now. So if you were to turn left and just bomb it down that big main road, you would end up at Southwark Bridge. So that sort of gives you an idea of uh, where you are in relation to the rest of London. And uh, yeah, Union Street continues for quite a long time and you can see that it's sort of quite quiet on this in this direction and in the opposite direction there's a, a sort of a, a contraflow cycle lane and it's nicely protected with a curb as well and uh, again so you can get your bearings we're about to cross Borough High Street and uh, you may have noticed a change in the uh, in the weather <laughs> there are a lot more people sitting out and um, this is because I actually reshot the end of this video um, I shot the original footage uh, sort of uh, in the spring on in the winter and I've reshot uh, uh, this very last section in the uh, in the summertime and that's because I wanted to change the route I went I originally went through the hospital but then I realized that uh, that's actually not a, a cycle route that's allowed so instead what we're doing is we're going down Snowfields which uh, or Snowsfields I think that's a really nice name for a, for a street isn't it and then uh, all you do at the end is you turn left at the end of this and uh, there is a no entry sign there but there's a little accept cycles sign on it and it's possibly a little bit narrow but yeah you go down Western Street and that just brings you straight to the mouth of London Bridge Station and uh, yeah believe it or not London Bridge Station has a lot of entrances and this is one of them which to be honest I wasn't aware of until I did this video but there you go it says it in black and white there London Bridge Station and so that is the route guys thanks very much for watching that um, I hope someone finds this useful I know you know a lot of people work in London Bridge these days it's quite a big employment center and uh you know people live in clapham so uh yeah if you found this useful do make sure you like the video on youtube that really helps other people find it and do subscribe to the channel uh, because i post new ones like it every week and uh thanks very much guys and see you again next time